We're here with Mayor Andy Leff and we're going to talk about water rates now. Everybody's favorite topic in, in this city. Just why are our water rates so high? Our water rates are quite high com uh, comparatively across the province. Uh, we're not the highest, uh, but we're certainly in the top third. Um, there's a couple of reasons for that. One, we have 21 water systems across the city of Kawartha Lakes. We have six wastewater systems, uh, a lot of urban areas. The city of Peterborough, for instance, has one water system, 75,000 people. We have 21 systems and 75,000 people. So, and, and, and some of the issue becomes the cost is, and, and you had asked me once before about, well, what about other townships and, and counties that have many different water systems? You know, how do they cope? Mm -hmm. One of the challenges we have is a lot of our water systems are very small and they're very expensive. And several, we have even less than 50 people on a particular water system. So there's a cost to maintaining those water systems and keeping safe drinking water to our residents. Mm -hmm. And some of them are self-sustainable, like, you know, Bob Cage and Lindsay, obviously, Fenland Falls is very close, mm -hmm. but the rest of them are actually operating at a loss. And so they're subsidized by the other wastewater users in the municipality. And uh, unfortunately, there's a cost to that. And, uh, you know, people ask, what should water rates be? What's a reasonable water rate? And mm -hmm. I don't have an answer to that. I mean, we're obligated as a municipality to provide safe drinking water, mm -hmm. um, you know, that, that for all our residents, or mm -hmm. for our residents on municipal systems. And, uh, and we do that, and we're obligated to do that, and we do it. And, and there is a cost to that, and it's not the cheapest uh, because of the size of our municipality and the size of mm -hmm. some of our small water systems. But mm -hmm. uh, uh, in my book, more importantly, is, you know, we want to make sure that we're, we're supplying that safe water. And uh, it, unfortunately, we have to pass some of those costs off to our, to our users, but just the users of the system. Not everybody pays for that. Okay, so if I live in Kinmount, I'm, I'm paying there. I'm not... Correct. If you're on a well yeah. and a septic somewhere in a rural area mm -hmm. and you're not on a water system, you're not paying for water and wastewater and mm -hmm. you're not part of that. We have about, out of 75,000 residents, yeah. we have about uh, 14,000 households that are on the user system. So okay. on the wa water system. So the rest of them are in areas that don't have a specific water system and they're paying for their own well and their own septic. Uh, separately, right? But the people who are on the water system from a municipal system point mm -hmm. of view are not paying for wells and septic either. Right. So there's two different, you know, areas of use in the municipality. So before we amalgamated into the city of Kawartha Lakes from Victoria County, is that an argument that it, uh, against amalgamation in the sense that the cost of, you know, of doing that, like you said, the same amount of people in a concentrated area like the city of Peterborough versus yes widespread, small systems, 21 of them. So that, that's a, that's it, was, a cost, it was. It, it was. It was one of the discussions back at the beginning that yeah. some of these systems weren't sustainable without mm -hmm. spreading it over, you know, all the users in the municipality. Right. And all, you could have done that, I guess, without amalgamating. I mean, that wasn't the sole reason. Right. Uh, you could have done it at the county level, you know, across all users, as others have probably done. But at the same time, it was it was a uh, it was it was because the systems, some of them were so small. Mm -hmm. For instance, uh, a kin mount, which has I don't know the exact number of users, but it's under a hundred. Mm -hmm. Their water bill, if it wasn't being subsidized by the rest of the municipality, would be in the area of nine to ten thousand dollars a year. Right. Okay, in Lindsay, if Lindsay's water system wasn't subsidizing some of the smaller systems around the municipality, then Lindsay's water would probably be about three hundred dollars a year. So that's the balance: is the larger urban areas are subsidizing some of the smaller rural areas in these small systems, and that's keeping it. Well, what we like to say affordable for everybody, but you know, at right. the higher end of that spectrum for sure. Where are the water rates trending now? Water rates are trending quite well, actually. We're for many, many years they were rising. Our debt was rising on our on our water and wastewater system to pay for the infrastructure because mm -hmm. uh, you simply can't pass it all on to the users. It would be prohibitive. Mm -hmm. So we've just started to level off, and in the increase that we put in the water bills this year, I think it was a two point seven percent, is the least in least amount of increase we've had in the last six years. Okay. So we're starting to level off and we see that, you know, where we're sustainable now as a system, we don't have to keep spending more money than we're bringing in, we've leveled off. Now we need to get a handle on it, find efficiencies, find mm -hmm. better ways to operate our system, find where we can join some systems together if they're close, you mm -hmm. know, put them into one system instead of two or smaller ones mm -hmm. and see if there's a way to start bringing those, you know, bringing those rates down a little bit. So we work on that quite hard every year, but uh, okay. it's a tough one. What about the debt on, on all the water and wastewater systems? Yeah. 
Yeah, we have uh, debt on our water system is about just over $50 million. Okay. Um, that's increased over, you know, from 2010, I think, from about $30 million. Mm -hmm. um, it's leveled off again in the last three or four years. Um, we have a pre-approved debt limit, and we're within that. We haven't had to increase that in the last little while, but uh, it's, it's what's required right now to maintain the infrastructure and keep these water rates uh, reasonable, the increases, or, mm -hmm. and to keep the system safe for, you know, for everybody who's using them. Um, it's just, it's, it's a lot of money over not a lot of users, and uh, the good news is we've leveled it off, and then we need to get our heads around how, would you, how do we start bringing that down. Mm -hmm. A lot of responsibility with municipal water systems, and I want to, if I can, if yes, I can read please, with I you, I just want to read safety. something yeah. that I have here. This is from Justice Dennis O'Connor from the 2002 report on the Walkerton Inquiry. Mm -hmm. Water is unique as a local service. It is, of course, essential to human life and to the functioning of communities. And the consequences of a failure in the water system are most seriously felt by those who depend on it locally. Municipal ownership and the ensuing responsibilities should provide a high degree of public accountability in relation to the local water system. So those were his words after the inquiry. Mm -hmm. They have since put municipal councils on alert that they are personally responsible for water systems. So mm -hmm. if a municipal, if our staff bring forward a recommendation to improve the infrastructure to keep water safe in one of our systems, right. and our council says, ah, we're trying to keep the taxes pretty low or the water rate's pretty low this year, so I don't think we're gonna do that, and something happens and people die or they get sick, um, the councils are personally responsible. They can be sued and they can mm -hmm. spend time in jail right. and they can be fined. So it hasn't happened, but there's a good, few good examples around Ontario in the last 20 years where uh, opportunities were there to better water systems and mm -hmm. some councils choose not to do that. Mm -hmm. And bad things happened, people got sick and there's a lot of bacteria out there, you know, in, in different forms. So it's one of those things that because of what happened in Walkerton, they've, they've taken a pretty serious view on, you know, how do right. we get a handle on this? How do we make sure um, we're going to spend some money, we're going to make sure this doesn't happen again, and that's exactly what they're doing. Right. And we get this legislation passed down again from the province that says, you know, you have to maintain this. We have a great group right now, Aqua, uh, who looks after a lot of our water systems. They maintain it for us. Mm -hmm. uh, but ultimately, as a municipality, we oversee that and we're responsible for, you know, for our drinking water systems. And Aqua does all 21 systems? They do 20 of them, yeah. The Lindsay, okay. the Lindsay water plant we do ourselves with our own staff, but I all see. the other systems are maintained by Aqua. Okay. Yeah. So how does, um, how does it compare to the cost of, say, a bottle of water versus a glass of water? Well, funny you should ask. Um, if you go to the local store and you buy a bottle of water, um, you know, clean, purified water can cost, I don't know, a dollar or two dollars in two some bucks. cases. Yeah. Sometimes been where it's been more than two dollars. That same bottle of water, that amount of water out of our tap system is about a penny of, wa of treated water. So, mm -hmm. yes, our water rates are high. And, you know, unfortunately, a lot of our water, whether it's our, our washrooms or our bathtubs is treated, you know, it's all treated the same way. Mm -hmm. And there's a cost to that. Yeah. But at the end of the day, for safe drinking water, it's, you know, I mean, we, we go to a store and buy a bottle of water for X number of yeah. dollars. And compared to what we're producing, you know, yeah. it's a pretty cost-effective yeah. way to do it. It's just, you know, we're trying mm -hmm. to protect all our residents. And, you know, there's an argument. I mean, people always say that Lindsay, you know, everybody's subsidizing Lindsay and Lindsay gets a lot of saying, this is a really good example where the residents of Lindsay are definitely 100% subsidizing the rest of the smaller municipalities when it comes to water and wastewater.